is uh, Kinaflow done. Going to be going out to our next location, which is Film Tools. Now, this isn't strictly a manufacturer trip. This is more just me indulging myself because I came over to LA a couple of years ago and came to Film Tools, and my goodness me, did it open my eyes as to what is available when you are literally on the doorstep of Hollywood because there are so many things which I've tried to get in the UK, like I was just at Kinoflow and back then I was looking at getting some uh, cables to split out our four bank Kinoflow ballasts into single um, tube with tails so you could put the tubes around the place and control them all from one place, a little, little bit like you would with uh, like an Astera tube or a Quasar um, but with a Kinoflow instead and using the equipment that we already had it was impossible to get those in the UK, albeit you could get them, but it took ages to order them and you couldn't go and look at all the different permutations of length and tail that were available. I just walked into Film Tools and they had them there. They had all of them there and you could just pick them up and go. On top of that, they had things that you just don't get access to in the UK, like uh, Matthew's Quacker Clamps. They're great for just uh, snapping in a little bit of uh, foam core or um, a bit of polyboard. In the UK, instead of cracker clamps, we have uh, we have forks, like pitchforks. Now, I really don't like them. I, I have a personal aversion to them because if we're on set and someone's uh, putting up a bit of polyboard and they've got a pitchfork and they don't do it right, they've essentially got something to skewer the talent with on the end of, uh, I don't know, a grip arm um, flown up above them or something. So if, heaven forbid, something went wrong, and they didn't put uh, the grip arm in righty-tighty, or they didn't uh, sandbag the leg properly, or if they did all those things and still someone knocked it over, you got a pitchfork <laughs> hanging above the talent. I just don't, don't trust them, don't trust them. Instead, you get a quacker clamp and it's, it's harmless. I mean, yeah, no, no one's gonna wanna be smacked on the head with it, but it isn't like something that you can stab someone with. So walking into film tools, just being able to pick up a couple of quacker clamps, and these are all boring, geeky things, but I like them, and I'm just looking for something that's gonna make everyone's lives a little bit better, um, or at least their lives a little bit longer so they don't have to get skewered by a pitchfork on set. I tell you what, it's weird driving around LA and looking at what passes for countryside, just like, is just gray brown madness out there. Yeah, I'm from the Cotswolds. Uh, I'm used to green, luscious, verdant hills and uh, feels a little bit wrong. iPhone vlog update. Uh, like silly stuff, like Siri. If I accidentally tap something and I activate Siri, it doesn't record, and sometimes I tap it, turn the phone around to start recording, and I haven't recorded anything. And that is a pain in the neck. Things that I'm liking about uh, iPhone vlogging, having the three lenses there ready to go. That is cool. I can really get used to that and the ability to switch to time-lapse mode, do slow-mo, that's handy, especially between those three different lenses and just snap this mic on, do a bit of talking. I do like the idea of it and briefly considered using Filmic Pro for this, but it seemed like it was gonna be a bit of a pain in the neck and the thing with these vlogs, the reason that I've used a GoPro in the past is I just need things to be quick. I do a lot of uh, editing and a lot of filming anyway in my day job and Anything which is a barrier to getting these vlogs out will mean they don't get done. So the quicker and easier it can be for me is better because I don't want to have to worry about necessarily color correcting this or worry about how I've got to eat tons of space on an iPhone to record it. So I've chosen to go with the standard iPhone video app for this. It does do a little bit of face recognition, so it's hopefully keeping my face in focus and all the rest of it, but it's wide, so it's probably in focus anyway. Whereas it seems like on Film uh, Filmic Pro, it would have been a bit harder to do that. And also, I have to then consider getting it out of the app, bringing it into the computer, post-processing it. The one thing which was really promising in the Filmic Pro app was actually the function which isn't in there, which is the ability to record two camera feeds at once. So you could do a close and a wide, or you could do the front camera and the one of the rear cameras. That could have been really cool, but it's not in there. A mile turn left to West Burbank Boulevard. 
handy little flag just there. Just flagged off that uh, light. I like it if I had a diffuser in that, uh, just to give me a little bit more soft light coming in. It's coming from the correct side as well, so I've got you know my uh, key on this side. Although, well, maybe I should have the key on this side if I'm looking like that. But I don't want to be looking like that. So yeah, key on this side. Handy. Just need it to be floppy so I can take this off my shirt because the camera probably is finding this hard to expose. I'm intrigued actually when I'm editing these to see how it handles the exposure, especially on the wide, because on the wide it's got to take in an awful lot uh, within this car into its consideration of what the exposure is meant to be. One saving grace of this might be that we've got a sunroof up here, because the sunroof is there I'm getting a lot more ambient fill, if you Turn will. Turn left to West Burbank Boulevard. Turning left to West Burbank Boulevard. Love this place because it's just like a candy shop for people who love all kinds of camera related stuff. So we're just going to have a quick tour around to see what they got. Lovely illumination obviously comes as standard here. All of the grip you could want, and this is what I love about this place. You can come in and you can get something like the T-handle from a C-stand and it's just there and you can grab it. In the UK we've had to replace sort of like stuff for our C-stands before for when we were using uh, other brands other than Avenger and it's been very hard to do that because those brands don't have so much representation in the UK. And moving around here, obviously you've got all of the attachments and grip and filters and diffusion and frames and stands, you name it, it is here for you to be able to buy. And then fun stuff, this is what really gets me interested, the car mounts and some really cool little mini grip heads. Film 2's have their own brand of those as well as Matthew's brand obviously just there as well. You walk through the lighting section, you've got C-stands, you've got uh, Quasars, Arri, and then all kinds of extra fixtures like uh, China balls and all of the attachments like the little heart things that you need to put those in to your production. Kina Flow, obviously we went to Kina Flow earlier and had a look at some of the stuff they got coming out so that was good fun. Next stop over here, looking at carts, going to be going over to Innovative tomorrow so we're going to have a closer look at some of those and then I've been trying to find little gifts for the team. I love stuff like this that you kind of need but uh, we always end up just hacking it together with bits of uh, polythene bag you can literally get a bag for the light or the camera that you need ready to go just bag it and you're good apart from that bongo ties and all kinds of soft stops for marks gloves and then something which i've actually had my eye on for a while so i'm going to pick some up we've got these little gaffers glasses the idea with that is that if you're setting up a big fixture and say you're using an HMI and you want to check that it's pointing at the right thing, well you don't want to look at the light because it's going to be really crazy bright. So instead you have a little backers glass and it's basically an ND filter, just wear around your neck and then you can stand in the position that you want the light to actually be hitting and you can look and see and guide it in without hurting your eyes. So a gaffer's glass is something which I've been looking to get for a while, they got them here I picked up a little Titan strap for Nauki so he can start using those to strap down some of the bits of wire and cabling and stuff. We've been using Velcro and Velcro is fine but I always find that it gets lost so I want something voluminous and obvious that he won't be able to lose, not that he loses stuff but there it is. I'm not going to buy any of these but got all the Manfrotto 244 arms, we've been doing a lot of stuff with Manfrotto recently where we've actually been making the launch videos for the new 244 arm attachments so it's good to see that they are fully represented here as well. Now I love this. We got an example of a rig which you can uh, rig up for a bike just here with different uh, mounting points for say you got a low angle wheel shot there, you got something for the top for the rider and then also another camera angle which you can get with that just there using all of those micro grip heads. So yeah it's been really hard to walk around here and not just walk out with the whole shop, but I always have to remember my luggage allowance is limited, so I can only pick up a few little bits and pieces. But uh, things that I've got, they're kind of fun. You can't easily get them in the UK. I think the team are going to love them.